So I've always had this obsession with having completely white hair. It's a thing I at one time wanted to dye my hair and realized you can't really get it to what you want it to be. You know, I'm a little weird, like you guys have no idea. But what no one tells you is that your hair does not automatically like go gray. You get these like strands and you gotta deal with it within hair that's not the same. But today we're gonna talk about why and how you can embrace the gray. But first, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Akia, and a love for me is a space where I share a love for type four, natural hair, beauty, and a bit of lifestyle in between. And if you subscribed before this video, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching the next video. Thank you for liking. Like, I appreciate you joining this tribe we have here in this here space. <laughs> so in the last couple years, maybe five years, we've seen more and more women, black women specifically, wearing their hair full white, right? White and black and gray, and it's just, it's gorgeous. And it's not something that we had really seen as much up to this point um, in editorials, you know, on socials. And I freaking love it. But it's like, how am I ever gonna get to that point, right? <laughs> right now I have like a strand here, a strand there, and it's just obtrusive. I don't dye it. And part of the reason is understanding what it is. So what is gray hair? It's white hair that's on a journey. It's actually your hairs that are already here losing their pigment. So about mid thirties or thirties in general is when your hair starts to lose its pigment. Your body is not producing as much melanin. So the hair that's already on your head as it's growing is starting to lose that pigment. So it comes out looking like it's white, right? Um, you may notice those strands that have white hair have like different color ends if you're in your early 30s or you're, you have premature grain because it's, it's a gradual thing. It just, you start to notice it at one point, right? But it's, it's a very natural part of aging. And so it's a good reason to embrace it because it's not gonna go away. But if you pluck those hairs, you may do more damage. Like I said, this is hair you already have. So you may think that your gray hair is suddenly growing in, but it's the hairs you already have. So, But if you pluck those hairs, you can do more damage than good. You could cause a lot of trauma to that area to where that hair may never grow back. And you may wonder why you have thin hair later when you used to have thick hair. If you were a plucker, that's partially why. Like you've done so much damage that you have lessened the density of your hair. Don't do it. It causes a lot of trauma when you pluck a hair out of your head. Don't break it, anything like that. This is a natural process. So don't stop the natural process of the hair shooting up from out of your head. You want that, right? If you want to keep your hair, you want that. So believe it or not, gray hair is thicker and grows faster than the other hair on your head. This is like the life cycle changing. So when you're younger, your hair does grow faster, right? It's just a natural part of being younger and then it slows down. But then as you gray, the gray hairs grow thicker and faster. So it's not that the gray hair is more abundant than the other hair on your head. It's just growing faster. So you see more of it and it's just a natural process that the body goes through. Now, why do we say the hair is gray? Well, the hair could be gray. It could appear yellow. It could appear orange. It's all because of the world around you, right? So the environment, the products you use, minerals, metals, and even the sebum that is naturally coming out of your scalp can cause the color of that white hair to look any other color, many other colors. Because it doesn't have a bunch of pigment, it is much easier for that hair to latch on to the colors that everything else you put on it and in the world that's around, it's much easier for that hair to grab onto that. So that's why the hair may not appear white. And this is very relevant to whether you want to wear the white hair, right? As your hair grows, if you want to embrace the white, which is something I intend to do, which is why I don't dye it, um, then you want to have it as vibrant as possible. And how can you do that? Well, you use a purple conditioner or blue conditioner. They also make shampoos 
but this hair is drier. Because your body is not producing as many oils the older you get, you know, this is this whole aging thing. It's a beautiful thing, you're getting older, you have been allowed to live this long, so embrace it. What you can do is preserve the white of your hair by counteracting it with chelating shampoos that get the mineral deposits off, right? The metals and all that. And then also purple shampoos and blue shampoos. They'll get rid of not only the products, but the dye from those products in your hair. They'll not only get rid of it, but they'll cancel out those colors, making your hair appear white or gray again. So that's ideal for those who want to wear their white or gray hair. There are more natural options for that, and I'll link them below because they have their own risks. So I'll link those below. So what are some hard don'ts when having gray hair? Because there are a few. Like I said, this hair has no pigment, right? It, it has lost its melanin, and that makes it much more vulnerable. Think about people are less melanated people on this earth. They are much more vulnerable to quick sun damage than us with lots of melanin. And the same goes for your white hair. The sun can damage the hair quite easily. So to counteract that, you want to use products with ingredients that absorb those UV rays. I'll link things below to like make it easier for you guys, but there are natural ingredients that do that too. Um, wearing hats and things like that. You do want to protect your hair from the environment. Also, since this hair is much more vulnerable, make sure you're conditioning, make sure you're giving its nutrients, making sure you're rebuilding all that's being lost. It is thicker and it grows faster, but it is more vulnerable to damage from products and environment than the hair that has pigment. You also want to stay away from heat styling as much as possible. Normally, you know, with this hair here, I'm like heat style all you want. But with hair that has no pigment, it really is vulnerable to heat, sun rays, UV rays, heat styling. So I'm not saying don't do it, but just be careful and don't make it a frequent thing. You see people with white hair who straighten their hair a lot, it, it like appears thin, even though I've told you it's thicker, and that's because it's being damaged. It is very much easier to damage the hair. So, you know, embrace your curls. It's probably your best bet. And then also, if you're going to dye the hair, process it longer. So right now, if I wanted to dye the grays, I would put the dye on the grays before I put it on the rest of my hair, like give it more time. It takes longer to process because it doesn't have any pigment. It doesn't have anything to grab onto, so it takes longer to process. A natural way to dye the hair is indigo. I've used indigo in the past and it's, it works really, really well to darken the hair. However, the minerals and things in there don't always interact well with chemical dyes. So just be cognizant of that. Definitely do a test patch before you go in with a chemical dye if you're using the natural indigo alternative to chemical dye. Otherwise, do you. Just know that permanent dye is permanent and um, it will be very hard to maintain both the white hair and the permanent dye. Your white hair is always gonna come out white and the permanent dyes, those, those chemical dyes, do not adhere nearly as well to your white hair than it does to this, you know, pigmented hair. So. You know, I'm all for embracing the gray, but if not, I do think indigo is a really, really effective and longer lasting way to dye the hair, but you know, it depends on your hair. Um, everybody's hair is different for sure. And then last but not least, let's talk about premature graying. My dad is one of those. He's had salt and pepper hair since he was five years old. It's genetic. So the rate at which you gray has a lot to do with your genetics. Stress can play a role in it. I mean, we've seen it with Obama and many presidents of the United States, like emit stress for some reason can cause you to go gray. They're not, there's not like really, really conclusive reasons at this point, but stress does play a factor in how your whole entire body behaves. Mostly though, if the graying happens or the whiting happens before the age of like 33, then you have premature graying, and that is definitely genetic. There's nothing you can do to stop it. Um, there, like I said, gray hair grows faster. So you're just gonna get more gray hairs as you go, and you have the option of embracing it or dyeing it. But I've already kind of stated some of the issues around dyeing the hair. Nonetheless, I do get it. Like if you have gray hair and you're 20, people are gonna perceive you as much older than you are, and it's, you know, it's a decision whether you embrace that 
or not totally a decision you know how you want to live your life in society i get that that can be a difficult thing i think it's easy to tell people hey it's not a big deal but we live in a society where looks are a big deal and how you appear is definitely how people treat you so i do have lots of gray or white strands in there and i just i don't mess with them <laughs> so in the comments box below let me know if you have any white or gray hair do you embrace the gray? Are you, a, are you a person who dyes their hair completely? Did you prematurely gray? Because I think it's something that's not discussed enough. There are more natural hair channels focused on gray hair now. Um, so definitely check them out. See how people are rocking it so you're not afraid of it. I think as women, we don't do enough of embracing ourselves as we age. We're so just focused on changing it to fit somebody's standard of beauty. When instead, I think we'd be better served just showcasing women in every stage as they are. I think our world needs more of that. So if you enjoyed this video in the comments box below, let me know your thoughts. Give me a little input on white gray hair. I'd really like to know. And until next time, check me out on Patreon, Instagram, Facebook, and the blog. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.